Good afternoon. Um, my name is Scott McGann, and um, I'm the health agent here in Falmouth. And each week I've been doing an FCTV spot um, to talk about an update on the COVID-19 situation. Um, I had a chance to, uh, yesterday to um, set up a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, that way some people can see some of the data, um, the charts and graphs and so forth, uh, rather than just seeing me talk for 10 minutes or so. So um, on the slide, I, uh, you can see that the uh, Falmouth uh, Health Department's website is falmouthmass.us. And our phone number is 508-495-7485. And uh, you can call or, or an email would be health. I should have put that in there, sorry. Health at falmouthma.gov. Um, and so you will get back to you as soon as we can. Obviously, we got a lot large, large volume of calls. Um, and we do our best. And um, especially if you do not have access to the computer or uh, internet or anything like that, so you can always call. Um, and we will do our best to get back to you as soon as we can. Um, so I'd like to talk a little bit about our cases. Um, as of 416 is 106 cases. You'll notice that the state uh, website's a little bit different. The state's is just positive test results from the laboratory. Ours will also include a doctor's diagnosis. And for example, um, if three people in the house have it and the fourth person gets symptoms, sometimes the doctors are saying, well, we're just going to do a suspect. Uh, it's just, you know, we, we don't need you to have a test. We, we can assume it. And so that will show up on my tracking on the MAVEN website, but may not necessarily show up with the state. So there's always, we tend to be slightly higher than the state. I think every town would be the same way. But the good news is I think a lot of people don't know that is well over 50% of the cases are recovered and are out of isolation. So we don't have... Um, you know, an isolation situation in, uh, of 106 because we've got a, a percentage greater than 50% that are actually out of the isolation, which is good. Um, the VNA and the health department continue to do the isolation and contact tracing. Mainly the VNA will do that uh, on each case. Um, some of the cases are happening within the same household. So a lot of times some of the days that we don't actually have a new residents with it we may have a case or two that had inside of a place inside of a home that already did uh, we remain about 20 percent of all cases in barnstable county which is still slightly higher i think we trended higher to begin with and um, we've remained um, i think we started as high as 24 percent and we've been remaining right around 20 percent uh, barnstable and falmouth are the highest population and have the highest number of counts um, the weekly case trend um, so we've done some graphing for you, is to show these are the cases, number of cases per week. If you notice, we started getting uh, a lot of cases on around three, the week of 327. We're averaging close to 40 cases, around 40 cases the week of 43 and the week of 410. The week of 417, we've been averaging about 20. Okay, so the trend is good. That's a good trend to have. So if we're getting more people out of isolation than we are gaining in cases, then that's what the flattening of the curve is. There's not enough data here for me to say that that is going to continue. It's still a little early in the process, but you can see that the trend is going more back towards the 20 or so cases per week as opposed to the two weeks that we had 40 cases per week. Total number of cases, as you can see, there is a slight trend towards a flattening of the number of cases. This is just total raw number. This doesn't take out the people that have been out of isolation. This is just total number. Um, so our expectation is to hopefully stay, you know, over the next two weeks to stay, you know, one or two a day. Then we're sort of flattening that out. And you can see that with that, um, with that plot. Um, this is off the Barstable County uh, Health.org website. They've got a really good website, and I'm going to spend a couple of slides with it. Um, you can see that they've been averaging somewhere around 15 to 20 per day. Um, their, curve is, their curve went up a little bit high, 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 and seems to be not exponentially growing, you know, not doubling every few days. You can see that there's been a steady, you know, about increase. They're averaging about 60 to 90 tests, somewhere around 15 or so uh, positives per day. Um, so you can visit the BarnstableCountyHealth.org, and I want to show you the next uh, cool thing. A lot of people ask uh, more details and where the hotspots are. This is actually called a heat zone map by zip code. So there's a couple, there's four zip codes they're using in, in Falmouth, I know there's more, but they're using the four main zip codes and you can click on each uh, location and get a count, total number of counts. 
and that is updated throughout, I think it's updated daily. And again, it's at the Barnstable County uh, Health.org uh, site. You see Mashpee and Bourne and a couple of times uh, is not participating. If you're participating, you're gonna be shown on here. It's not gonna give you streets, it's not gonna give you location, just gonna go by zip code. Um, so those that have been asking for some more detail, that's as much detail uh, that we're gonna give out. And that's through, again, Barnstable County Health.org. Uh, state counts is 32,181. Uh, there's been 140, just under 141,000 tests administered and about 22.8% positive. So people that have symptoms that are similar still are testing more other things than they are testing COVID. Um, there's been 1,245 deaths with about 610 of those, about 40 something percent of those from long-term care facilities. And of course, you, uh, you all know that uh, the elderly and weakened immune systems are much more prone to severe um, cases of COVID. Um, I did a graph of what Barnstable County, Falmouth, and Br uh, um, Plymouth County are doing. In gray, you see Plymouth County, so their cases are growing at that rate, which is a higher rate. You can see back around four or five, somewhere on April 5th, we were pretty similar in number. At one point, right around the beginning of April, we were slightly higher than Plymouth County, and then Plymouth County seemed to have taken off, and we have done a decent job leveling out. You see Falmouth is not as high as Plymouth, but on high side for Barnstable. And, but you see us following a similar trend line for case numbers, similar to what Barnstable County's doing. And, uh, and that's, this is per cases per 100,000. Um, so you can see where uh, Plymouth County and, you know, the same would be sort of with Bristol County and some of the other counties. Uh, Countywide, Barnstable's faring a bit better, uh, much better, uh, in the recent week or two. And if for anybody that wants to copy this, I believe we'll put this on the website as well. Um, this is uh, local, again, this is sort of piggybacking on what we just did. You see that the, uh, if you look at the uh, left side, 4-9, uh, which is last week's, comparing this week's, that... Per 100,000, uh, Falmouth is averaging, would be 300 cases per 100,000. Um, now, and this number would only go up. So the thing about this is, is it's, it's only showing adding of cases, so that number per, ca uh, per capita will increase. So Barnstable County is averaging 208 cases per 100,000. Uh, we're averaging higher, slightly higher than in Barnstable County, but definitely less in the state. If you look at the two, what I wanted to show is, if you look at the state, you see 274 per 100,000 jumped way up to 466 per 100,000. So they went up like 40% in a week, okay? There are cases per 100,000. Barnstable's gone up about half of that and Falmouth's gone up about half of that. So we're sort of trending more towards the Barnstable County uh, increase uh, uh, cases per population. The state seems not to be doing as well. And then if you went out to Western Mass, I think we're following lower about what Barnstable County is. Um, but, and, it's, and it makes sense. Um, the more urban, the more um, places where uh, people are in tighter quarters, taking public transportation, living in an apartment complex, you might have to touch a lot of doorknobs and things of that nature in, the, in common areas, then the, the rates would generally go up. It's also got a lot to do with, um, you know, certain cities being hit more, um, certain people not, uh, certain groups um, not seeking medical attention, they may not have medical insurance, people, uh, if, you know, sort of families that live with um, three generations together, they tend to be hit harder. There's more, not as much, not as easy to social distance. You know, people that live in larger houses on larger lots are easy to social distance, and that's showing itself out with the data, and it's similar to what happened in New York. Uh, a little bit about the hospital. Uh, Cape Cod Healthcare today opened their 80-bed uh, COVID step-down here on Main Street uh, today. Uh, Brewster uh, is another Cape Cod healthcare site uh, with, I think, over 100 beds. And Joint Base Cape Cod, I think, has somewhere around 90 beds slated to open on Monday. We hope that, they don't, that they're not needed heavily, but they're there uh, for surge capacity. Um, the state, I believe, last time I checked, was somewhere around, today is the 17th, so but somewhere over the next three days is supposed to be our highest number. Um, and hopefully it starts to tail down that we don't necessarily need these like we think we might, uh, we thought we might have maybe a month ago. And that's, that's a good thing. It's great to have this capacity. This would be for people that are not um, severely ill, but also but, but are sick enough that they need uh, medical attention, oxygen, IV, things of that nature. And that's what these step downs are for. So uh, thank goodness for what Cape Cod Healthcare and uh, Joint Base Cape Cod has done. So um, the, the test site, the COVID-19 test site, continues to be at 4Cs, so Cape Cod Community College. 
Uh, it's still a drive-through setup. It does have new hours um, because of they're having an issue with you know burnout. There's only so many volunteers and so forth. That they've instead of being seven, seven days a week, it's Monday through Saturday, nine to five. They're averaging between 60 and 90 tests per day. Um, 1,900 total tests, give or take, uh, with about 550 being positive. Uh, your physician still determines the need for a test and, and calls uh, for a uh, Cape Cod Healthcare, and then Cape Cod Healthcare will schedule that with for the, the test center at Four Cs, and then uh, you'll get an appointment for testing. So the only thing that's really changed on that is the new hours of um, 9 to 5, Monday through Saturday. Um, my last slide's going to be mainly talking still about social distancing and personal hygiene. This still is important as ever. Um, like I've said in the last couple of meetings, it's definitely having an effect. Um, we don't have exponential growth like we would have. We, we, our cases could easily be in the thousands by now um, if we weren't. So it's still as important as ever. I do not know when we get out. Um, the, the, the case numbers, the disease trends, the epidemiologists will tell us when we're able to loosen and how we're going to loosen. And you saw some of that last night if you watched um, the press conferences that the president had um, talking about uh, grouping uh, states together like New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Massachusetts, and New Hampshire, and doing things sort of in, in groups that way. Um, and you'll start seeing you know, how we're going to loosen up, and that's going to start coming down the line. But obviously, the state's still determining that they're going to get the most number of cases over the next few days, and things are still coming in. We're still getting several cases or two cases or four cases or no cases a day that, you know, that has to sort of drop off more before the, um, I would think, before we would start getting the permission to do so. Um, other things, face covering advisory. So I've, I've sent out the advisory, uh, I sent out a robocall last week about advising people to wear face coverings in public. Um, so for example, when I leave this, build, this room here, when I go into the common areas of town hall, we, I wear a face mask. Um, we're advising all of the food establishments. I send it all to the places that are open and doing food to um, advising them to wear face coverings. Um, you know, I really would like anybody out in public to wear them if, you know, if they've got them. Um, it is an advisory. Um, being aware of your health and staying home when ill is critical. Not going to work, not going shopping is very important if you feel any symptoms. Um, hand washing, hand sanitizing, cleaning of surfaces in common areas. So if you own, you know, if you're in a an apartment building or a co or, or a public building that's still open, cleaning and hand sanitizing surfaces that are touch being touched throughout the day, such as doorknobs and door jams, and I mean doorknobs and uh, um, countertops and so forth. So cleaning, sanitizing, hand washing, all the same stuff that we were talking about is still as important. Um, Taking isolation and quarantine very seriously and asked to do, if asked to do so, uh, the last thing we want to do is try to track down somebody in isolation who decided to still go shopping. So if you are in isolation or in quarantine, it is a lousy couple of weeks or, or, or so because it's going to take 72 hours at minimum of no fever and uh, really, really reduced symptoms before you can go back out. And so that could take an extended period of time. So we just ask that people that are isolated or quarantined take this very seriously. Um, Again, I'm not sure when um, some of this loosening of these of our restrictions will occur. Um, just you know, we'll we'll post things as they go. So again, our, our website to go back to the beginning, um, falmouthmass.us. There's a COVID page. Um, also, health at falmouthma.gov is our website, uh, and our phone number is 508-495-7485. And um, so that's our weekly update. So I think again to recap, going through this again that. Um, you know, uh, I see sort of a trend towards a flattening. Um, again, we need some more data to see if that's occur. you know, indeed what's happening. I think Barnstable County is doing better than most counties um, it, by population. Um, Falmouth's been remaining slightly on the high side, and it, it, but, um, you know, we're, um, we're working hard to keep everybody isolated and quarantined that need to be and uh, doing the best we can. And uh, so I will, again, do this again next week. Thanks.